Jeremy Paxman is a journalist raised from an upper-middle-class background. He attended Malvern Independent School where he received privileged education. He is a presenter on Newsnight, a weekday BBC television current affairs program which specializes in analysis and often robust cross-examination of senior politicians. Jeremy Paxman is known for his abrasive and combative style of interviews. Valerie Amos is the eighth and current UN Undersecretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, having been educated at Townley Grammar School, where she was the first black deputy head girl. She received excellent education. Dylan Mills, known commonly as Desir Eskel is a British rapper, born in the streets of East London. Many schools kicked him out for being a rascal, as he was, fighting with teachers, stealing cars, and robbing pizza delivery men. His education was very poor, however he was interested in music, the only subject where he didn't get kicked out from, from making music in his bedroom. As encouraged by his music teacher, he managed to find a breakthrough into the musical industry. The interview takes place after Barack Obama's victory in the USA presidential election, the first black man to be held at the office. Jeremy Paxman is interviewing Valerie Amos, UN Undersecretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator, and Azir Askel, a rap artist. Both are representatives of the black population and Jeremy Paxman is determining their opinions as to the likelihood of a black prime minister in Britain. In this essay I will analyze the influences on and the effects of spoken language choices made by the participants of the Paxman Amos Dizzy Rascal interview on Newsnight. Jeremy Paxman opens the discussion with a very direct, straightforward question to Dizzy Rascal. Desir Eskel how does it seem to you that this is a rather vague, open-ended question which does not invite a specific answer. We can also note that this question is a consistent use of monosyllabic words. From this we can infer that Jeremy Paxman acknowledges Desir Eskel's education, background and marked Cockney accent. Paxman's question, therefore can be perceived to be an example of the accommodation theory. Desir Eskel responds by stating quotation. His answer is rambling, repetitive, and uses fillers such as like and earn this contrast to Valerie Amos and Jeremy Paxman whose questions or answers contain little to no fillers. This could be due to the difficulty to Jeremy Paxman's open-ended question or the lack of education to answer the question. Furthermore, Desir Eskel offers little insight into effect of race on Obama's election but attributes his victory to hip-hop quotation. His casual and colloquial answer has very little content as it is rather simplistic making the place better and does not specify meaning. Possibly ignoring Tazir Eskel's response, Jeremy Paxman politely apologizes for interrupting and asks specifically if he could apply this to Britain. Jeremy Paxman appears to hesitate when using the word specifically. Is this because he is trying to adapt his language? Desir Eskel's response is slang and brief yet in time common to those of the poor educated East London background. However, the use of slang in this context by Desir Eskel is meaningless. Jeremy Paxman then later makes a brief comment, inviting elaboration or rather positive but Desir Eskel's response is rather muddled without giving any elaboration. He addresses Jeremy Paxman as man and uses in it at the end of his response terms which are widely used in East London slang. Jeremy Paxman moves on to question Valerie Amos and his style of question is completely different using more complex vocabulary and sentence length. He uses terminology common to sociological theory. Valerie Amos' response is detailed and considered. She relates the result in America to our political parties and offers opinions. She uses words such as quotation which are more polysyllabically and reflect her well-educated background. She answers in a formal register and are full of political content. At this point we are hesitant whether BBC's Newsnight should have chosen a black celebrity who has more knowledge on politics in preference to Desir Askel. Jeremy Paxman turns to Desir Askel and again uses a very simple direct question. Desir Askel's response is rambling and has very little content so Jeremy Paxman cuts in and sums up what appears to be DR's point an individual can make a difference, and Desir Askel agrees. In this respect, 
Jeremy Paxman has probably helped Desir Askel to clarify his point. Furthermore, Desir Askel in this response is clearly showing that he has little knowledge in politics. Politicians are gonna say what they say. Jeremy Paxman then asks Valerie whether we have done in Britain so much better on gender than we have on race, but is quickly interrupted by Valerie Amos who wants to make a point whether it is likely Britain will have a black prime minister. Valerie Amos, like her previous answer, uses high register vocabulary typically found in the upper class to describe Obama's success in America. Overall, Jeremy Paxman seems very light-hearted in the interview and Desir Askel also seems quite happy, however throughout the interview I felt Desir Askel was left isolated with both Jeremy Paxman and Valerie Amos having a received pronunciation accent reflecting their high social class, powerful individuality and prestigious institutions. Desir Askel was unable to keep up to the demand of Paxman's questions which have been assimilated specifically for him. This left Desir Askel to stutter, hesitate and use fillers as seen throughout the entire interview. Desir Askel's link between hip-hop and Obama is the only way he can make a direct link between himself and politics, which overall he struggles to do.